cloudy. It's cloudy go back to the channel. Uh, saying five most elite special forces in the world from the finest. Special forces are military units that have been trained to carry out special, often secretive, good. and sometimes dangerous Hope operations. Feeling good too. Depending on the you country, these missions can include everything from covert ops to counterterrorism. So who are the best of the best? From the Huntsman Corps to the British SAS, here are five of the most elite special forces in the world. Some Before we begin, shit. make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell for more amazing videos every day. With that being said, let's begin. Number five, Huntsman Corps, Danish Special Forces. The Huntsman what Corps, the also known as hey, the, what does Corps, the pain is a Royal Danish Army Special Forces unit from Alborg Air Base. If you want to be one of the best of the best, then this Special Forces unit is the one you'd want to be part of. It was first formed in 1785 I as the Hunter Corps of Zealand, but I underwent several name changes over the years. It became the Huntsman Corps in 1961 right and has trained over 350 soldiers between 1961 and 2009. Even though it has been around for hundreds Damn. of years, it wasn't until 1995 that elite bro, trained soldiers look at were deployed that big on their first ass mission. It was time to, it wasn't until 1995. Bro, y'all see that, bro? Nah, nah, bro. Even That's a big ass, bro. Look at this big ass oppression. It wasn't until 1995. Y'all see that big ass, bro? That suppressor, bro, in your hand was probably like the size of a football, bro. Elite trained soldiers were deployed on their first mission. It was time to put their training and hard work to the test. A six-man team. Task Force K-Bar. Hey, if there's any U.S. military men in my comments right now, I seen Kyrie today watching this video, you know what I'm saying? How do y'all feel on y'all first deployment? Like, when y'all in a mission, y'all know it's hot. Y'all know y'all about to have guns out and everything. Y'all about to let y'all about to let bullets go. You know what I'm saying? What, what, what do you feel your first time getting into that? And after your first time, are you excited to go back? And if you are, why? If not, we know why. You know what I'm saying? But if you are, why are you excited to go back out there and fight these niggas, bro? Knowing that the country ain't gonna do nothing for you, bro. Was sent on a counter-sniper reconnaissance mission you know I mean? to Sarajevo and Bosnia. For their efforts as part of a joint special forces group in Afghanistan, the Huntsman Corps received the Presidential Unit Citation in 2004. If you think you've clocked up enough hours on your gaming console to fancy yourself a special forces expert, then think again. You would be amazed at what it takes to actually become involved in an elite special forces team, such as the Huntsman Corps. You must be both physically and mentally fit. The first stage covers five days of learning what you must get better at, such as swimming and orienteering. You then move on to training and evaluation, followed by an eight-week patrol course. If you manage to excel in this grueling training course, you then move on to the aspirant course, which is all about learning and pushing your physical limitations. Those who master the aspirant course will then complete two weeks of parachuting and two weeks of combat swimming. I know Today, for some people that might corpse be funny. Consists yeah. of 150 bro, look soldiers. at these niggas, bro. Bro, D, you can't tell me these don't look like the baddest niggas on the planet, bro. And to be honest, bro, they most likely are. If they masked up like that, bro, they probably the baddest motherfuckers in the planet, bro. With experience in parachuting, infiltration, some of the sabotage, counterterrorism, surveillance, demolitions, and more. They model much of their programs on those of the British SAS and often train with both them and U.S. Navy SEALs. Number four. So we Indian use, we Marcos. use the British well, template the to Marcos, train our That people. doesn't mean they're a special forces unit you'd want to underestimate. The Indian Marcos, also known as Marine Commandos or Marcos, is a special operations unit that works as part of a tri-series Armed Forces Special Operations Division. Marcos has been around since the late 1980s and can undertake all manner of missions, be it on the sea, on the land, or in the sky. However, they specialize in maritime operations. Marcos has around 2,000 personnel, but accurate numbers are classified information. What you can know, however, is that training is so strict that pre-training applicant selection excludes up to 80% of applications and selected personnel within three days. Anyone considered for the Marcos has to come from the Indian Navy and must be in their early 20s. Yeah. The two-year recruitment process incorporates airborne operations, counterterrorism. <coughs> if they want you in your early 20s, bro, that means they plan on, like, they plan on using you, bro. You know what I'm saying? They want you early on. That means they want you when you're really young so they can use you until you're, like, 40 or 50. Because then when you get to, like, 40 or 50, you might become, like, a, a what they call them, like, an admiral or something like that, bro. 
Y'all know this better than I do. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what they call them exactly, but. Yeah, bro. They plan on using you, bro. You got to be younger. You got to be in your younger 20s, bro. Why can't you be in your mid-20s? You feel me? No, if you're in your mid 20s, you, you damn near at your peak. But they want you in your early 20s. They want to get you before you hit your peak. Combat diving, unconventional you know warfare training, and more. The first step to joining the Indian Marcos is three days of physical fitness testing and an aptitude test. After 80% of applications are screened out, the remaining 20% will go through what's referred to as Hell's Week, which is not dissimilar to what the U.S. Navy SEALs do Football for their players recruits. Know what this is. From sleep deprivation to physical exercise, yeah, Marcos leaves no stone unturned in ensuring they choose One the best of the people weeks for the job. Purpose, Only around 2% of applicants will make it past this point. The entire training process can take around three years. With everything from Damn. weaponry to warfare. A three year hell week? Is that what he said? Commandos. Am I tripping? Marcos leaves no stone unturned in ensuring they choose the best people for the job. Only around 2% of applicants will make it past this point. The entire training process can take around three years. With everything from weaponry to Damn, warfare, bro. intelligence, Imagine training for three years, commando bro, skills, just to find out you might not get the, the job. Job. The dropout rate is around 90%, and those who make it through to becoming part of this elite special forces unit will well and truly. Bro, what kind of mittens are they using, and bro? Those who make it through to becoming part of this elite special forces unit will well and truly deserve to be there. After all, who would go through all that and not be capable of protecting their country? In 2017, bro, if somebody go through all of that training and they they don't make it, just imagine how they are in the real world. Like, not the real. World. Just imagine how they are in the. In a civilized world, you know what I'm saying? They still gonna be like the top tier, one of the top tier humans when it comes to like physical type of shit. You know what I'm saying? They still gonna be elite to a, a majority of human beings, bro. You know what I'm saying? So they rescued an Indian bulk carrier ship from they still gonna be dangerous, bro. And the and the fact that they didn't make it might make them a lot angry, uh, a lot angrier. So then when they come back to civilization they might just let all hell loose you know what i'm saying i guarantee you that's how most people like you know what i mean marcos has also been known to fight alongside the indian army such as during the 1999 cargill mm. war number three jw grom jw grom which is named in honor of the home army and silent unseen from world war ii is a premier special forces unit from poland such is their accuracy, precision, and skill set that soldiers within JW Grom are often referred to as the surgeons. They boast surgical abilities, extensive medical training, and are even lie, modeled on NATO Tier 1 have, units, bro. such as Delta Force from the United States. It won't take you long to realize why JW Grom appears on the list of the five most elite special forces in the world. They are a group of highly trained soldiers who are ready for almost anything. They were established in 1990 and have been deployed in anti terrorist operations unconventional warfare, special services, and enemy line mm. force. In 2002, a 40-man team from JW Grom was deployed for Afghanistan for the 2003 invasion of Iraq. While they were integral to this operation, they weren't on their own. JW Grom formed part of the Naval Special Operations Task Group, which included U.S. Navy SEALs, U.S. PSYOPs, civil affairs teams, and the British Royal Marines. During this operation, Grom was tasked with assaulting the KAOT oil terminals, during this operation, there were no casualties, and explosives that were found were taken care of by Grom. Man, even their Grom faces are blurred out, bro. Also been you know, you know somebody is really, you know, really him in the military when they face start getting blurred out, bro. That's because nobody wants, like, the government don't want nobody to know who they are. So when they are, like, when they, when they are, like, undeployed or whatever, like, when they like chilling on vacation or whatever like that if they even get one depending on what, you know what i mean they don't want nobody to know who they are because they're very important to the military they mean that means these people right here are important soldiers you know what i'm saying we need these soldiers right here the other soldiers, you know what i'm saying but we these soldiers right here we need these motherfuckers to come back bro because these are the ones that's most likely gonna come back and these are the ones that keep succeeding in every single fucking mission we send them on you know what i'm saying and they need that bro we need that, bro. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that, that's how you know. That's how you know somebody's really with the business. When they in the military and they first get blurred out, their face get blurred out, bro. That's one of the telltale signs that they really, they dangerous, bro. A close target really reconnaissance bad. operation with debt one. Because they would have just showed us the face, bro. Look, they, show, they showed us him. They showed us Chris Kyle. He, he a dangerous bad mother. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he was important, but, bro.
I mean, I think it's because he passed away. So they're like, you know, we can show his face. You know what I'm saying? Did he pass away? Because if he didn't pass away, I don't want to put that on nobody, bro. Was assigned to JW Grom for one week in Baghdad as well. The training process to join this elite special forces unit is rigorous. And oh, so he trained in the thing too? Do so with the best groups and in the, the world. Drum, Psychological, JW, drum, physical, and durability tests all make up part of the initial testing stage to filter out those who don't make the cut. Those who do can move on to disciplines such as sniping, parachuting, anti-terrorism, and other uh, special... Oh, so to become like a sniper and stuff like that, like those type of people, you got to go through like the hardest train, like... You got to go through all of that training. You got to be one of the best soldiers there. You know what I'm saying? To become a sniper. I thought sniper, bro, I thought sniper just trained in regular hand to hand combat and just shooting. You know what I'm saying? But apparently they got to be like a top tier military man to even trained to be a sniper. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, snipers, bro, people be underestimating snipers. 5% of those in Grom are trained paramedics or medics. And all soldiers also trained to capture and kill. Number two, British SAS. It's of no wonder to anyone why the British Special Air Service appears on the list of the most elite forces in the world. Most of the special forces units around the world base their military model on that of the SAS. And even the US Delta Force unit founder spent time with the unit. The British SAS was founded in 1941 and became a corpse in 1950. Their primary focus is on reconnaissance, counterterrorism, hostage rescues, and direct action. Due to the sensitivity of what they do, this special forces unit is highly classified. There is limited information on what they actually do. What we can Damn. tell you, however, is that the SAS is made up of a regular and two reserve units with These around 400 to 600 ops. soldiers. There are four squadrons with 65 men in each, a major, and four troops commanded by captains. Each troop has typically around 16 men, with these separated into patrols of four men. In each patrol, each of the four men has a specialized skill. They might be a medic, in charge of demolition, or something else equally as important and essential for special operations. The British SAS never recruit from the general public, and the training program is intense. The only way to get into this special forces unit is by applying from the UK Armed Forces. Most candidates often have an airborne Damn. or commando background. During the twice yearly selections, you already had to candidates been undergo through all test. this. With cross combat against the clock, even. a 40 mile march, a 20 hour scale, and ascending of the tallest peak in South Wales, Penivan. I ain't gonna lie, bro. Walking with your friends for a long period of time, bro, if you got like snacks, something to drink, you know what I'm saying? It's like one of the easiest walks in the world, bro, especially if one of those friends might be funny, and especially if it's a lot of us, you know what I'm saying? Which means I could probably like run up a few minutes to go talk to somebody else and then maybe I could slow down a little bit and talk to the homie back here. You know what I'm saying? I'm still walking this whole 40. You know what I'm saying? I'm probably doing more because I'm running all the way up there and stopping to come all the way back and have to keep walking forward anyway. So I'm probably getting more of the exercise done anyway. So I think maybe they do this on purpose because they know people going to be talking and stuff. So they're going to be moving slower. You know what I'm saying? But it's, it's, it's a task that could be done, but it's a hard task. You know what I'm saying? Which you, it's a hard task. If, if you was walking that long, bro, by yourself. Must also take part in combat survival exercises, Crazy. battle plans, foreign weapons, a four mile run in 30 minutes, a two mile Ooh, swim in under 90 man. minutes, and jungle phases in one of three areas. Finally, they must undertake a week long escape and evasion exercise. During this exercise, the candidates form patrols and spend the next 36 hours in grueling conditions. Out of the 200 candidates who start, only around 20% will manage to scale and descend Bani Fan in the required time frame. After the escape and evasion exercise, about 30 men will remain. Those who make it through will be able to transfer to an operational squad. I can only squadron. imagine how people feel For when they don't the make British it SAS has and been they in all that shit. Only men have been able to join. However, 2018 marked recruitment policy change and the first woman a mother applied for the six-month selection course Damn, in May 2019. A mother. While she remains anonymous, she is thought to be experienced in covert operations in Afghanistan and had worked alongside the SAS before. Okay, okay. The British SAS is a high angle. I know this going to turn the woman up. Gained respect and honor around the world due to not only their engagement, they have been awarded several battle honors dating back to 1944. Number one, Navy SEALs. 
At number one is the United States Navy Sea, Air, and Land SEAL teams. The Navy SEALs is the United States Navy's primary special operations force and part of the Naval Special Warfare Command. This is the hardest John one. John F. Kennedy created the SEALs in 1962, and they are often noted as being the cream of the crop. The SEALs carry out special operations in all manner of terrains, including the water, jungles, Arctic, mountains, deserts, and your everyday urban Okay, so it's the Navy SEALs. There is almost nothing this elite so, so force... The, so the Marines aren't the hardest, uh... Aren't the cream of the crop? I thought the Marines were the top of the top, like the ones that could do everything. So it's the Navy SEALs. Can't do. What's more, such as their experience and elite skill set, that the CIA recruit their operators from the SEALs. Some of their more unique tasks even include eliminating high-level targets. Y'all think being a Navy SEAL and the CIA agents since the 1960s, fun, they have been involved in the they Korean be, War, right? Grenada, for people who the Iran Iraq War, the Persian Gulf War, Panama the war in Afghanistan, and Operation Enduring Freedom in the Philippines and Horn of Africa. Those who think their gaming skills put them in good steed for the Navy SEALs will be terribly mistaken. Before SEAL training can commence, a candidate must pass medical and physical screening, which can be quite challenging in itself. It includes things like swimming 500 yards in 12 and a half minutes, 50 sit-ups in two minutes, and a 1.5 mile run in 10 and a half minutes. minutes. Those who pass these tests hard, can begin right? the nah. rigorous Navy SEALs training regime. It could the be. attrition rate sits at approximately 80%, and formal training can take around 12 months, with warfare prep, parachuting, and more. While the SEAL Special Forces team was a male hey, some people unit, love this, that changed though. in 2015. It was decided that if a woman could pass the grueling basic training, they should be allowed to serve. And the ones serve. who love it, bro, However, in 2017, I appreciate A woman who tried to become the first female Navy SEAL quit within one week of initial training. Because the people who love it, it stops part of an elite the special draft forces can be. from happening. Because it's enough people it signing up. You know what I'm saying? Best special forces? Hey, man, what y'all think, bro? I didn't know some of these forces were even real, bro. Like, some of the stuff you see in video games. Like, lately, uh, this has been a couple things that's been, like, similar to some of the... Uh, a lot of stuff based off real life lately. You know what I'm saying? Like, little things like TV shows, some games, and all types of stuff. So... I mean, I'm surprised, but I'm not surprised. You know what I'm saying? This is some Call of Duty type shit, bro. Hey, I would love to see some more military grade type shit, bro. Because I want to know what the hell we got hiding in the mountains in that Area 51 type shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Shout out to shout out to the finest. You know what I'm saying? Yeah.